The Holy Bible is considered as an unreliable authority by non-believers all the time. Many people don't believe in the Bible. Many believe it to be untrue and say that every story in the Bible is too fictional to be true. But there are many archaeological discoveries proving otherwise. Here are five archaeological discoveries that prove the Bible is true. The very first discovery is the Pool of Siloam. The Pool of Siloam is one of the most famous passages in all of the Bible. Jesus notices as a blind man sat there, so he kneels down and gets down on his level, and then Christ does something rather unusual. He spits on the ground and creates a sort of clay with his fingers. He then takes the clay and then anoints it on the blind man's eyes and says, Go wash in the pool, the pool of Siloam. The blind man obeys and immediately those blind eyes can suddenly see. But what's interesting about this is that very recently skeptics used to deny the existence of this pool. They used to say, where is this pool of Siloam? It doesn't even exist. Well, in 2004, a large drainage pipe in Jerusalem needed fixing, so construction workers began to dig around and try and solve the problem. As they dug deeper, they noticed something peculiar. They saw some large stone steps, so they called two archaeologists, Ronnie Reich and Eli Sukran. When these two men saw what was down beneath the ground as they dug further with other archaeologists, they uncovered multiple steps in a pool which was 225 feet long. How do we know that this specific pool is the Pool of Siloam? There are two clues to this discovery. First one is that it was found in the city of David next to the Temple Mount exactly as the scripture tells us. The second clue is that right at the end of the pool was Hezekiah's tunnel, which is something that King Hezekiah dug out as an irrigation system, again, just as the Bible tells us. The second most popular discovery is Pilate's inscription. It wasn't long ago since people doubted the existence of Pontius Pilate. This is the man who officiated the trial of the Lord Jesus Christ, and when he looked at Jesus' life, he said, I find no guilt in this man because Jesus was the only one to be morally perfect. But after 1961, no one would dare question the reality of this person, Pontius Pilate. Maria Teresa was digging in an old ancient Roman theater in Kassara, Israel, when she found a limestone rock. Carved in the rock read these words, To the divine Augusti, this Tiberium Pontius Pilate, perfect of Judaeus, dedicated this. It was later dated to make sure that it was totally legitimate, and the time period came back to 26 AD to 36 AD, the years when Pontius Pilate was active. It was also worth noting that there are also some ancient bronze Pilate coins, which have also been discovered, and they date back to 29 AD. The third archaeological discovery is the Tel Dan Steel. Most biblical scholars would all agree that this is the most earth-shattering find out of all other archaeological discoveries in biblical history. After Jesus Christ, King David is considered to be the greatest king in the Bible. This king had a vast kingdom. He was great, the greatest warrior, the Messiah is said to come out of his lineage, and yet for many years there were many false claims swelling around the world that David was just a fantasy character. Many people said that this man called David did not exist, and again, the Bible cannot be historically accurate. In 1993, an archaeologist discovered the Canaanite inscription in Tel Dan, northern Israel. The stone, which had been written in Aramaic, had been traced back to the 9th century BC, and the person who is believed to be behind this inscription is likely to be King Heziel, as it describes his triumphant victory over Joharam, the son of Ahab, who was from the house of David. This showdown has also been recorded in the Bible in 2 Kings chapter 2. This is a document, a source outside of the Bible, which proves that David was a real person. The fourth archaeological discovery is the Erastus engraving. The Bible says in Romans 16, 23, Gaius, whose hospitality I and the whole church here enjoy, sends you his greetings. Erastus, who is the city's director of public works, and our brother Quartus send you their greetings. We meet the person Erastus only a few times in the Bible, but it's believed that this man who was a treasurer was also part of the 72 who Jesus sent out in Luke 10. In 1929, an archaeologist discovered this inscription, and it is believed to date all the way back to AD 50. It reads, Erastus, in return for his adileship, laid this pavement of his own expense. The fact that this pavement stone was found in Corinth where Erastus was a civil servant and the fact that Erastus was a treasurer 
meaning he had a bit of spare cash in his pocket, so he really could afford to lay down a pavement, which not a single person at the time could afford. This is an indication that this is the same Erastus the Apostle Paul refers to several times in his letters. All of these findings about the Bible makes us want to believe that these were real people who existed at a real time and not just fictitious characters like the skeptic or the atheist might accuse us of. The fifth archaeological finding is Mars Hill. The Bible says in Acts 17, 22, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. Well, most people think that Christians are superstitious, but most people don't know that Athens is a real place, and all these places that we're talking about are real-time places. People think that those who wrote the Bible ate something weird, which made them lose their mind, but if you read the Bible, you'll realize that it's a rational book written at real historical times on this earth, and they were real people just like everyone else on this earth. The Bible in Romans 1.20 says this, for since the reaction of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Deep down inside our hearts, every one of us knows that God exists. When we look around us, we see the nature and the beauty around us, a creation that cannot be explained. Then why do we ignore such a factual book as the Bible? Why do we try and push it in the corner and think about it? Why do we never ever want to find out who this man Jesus Christ really is? How do we go anywhere but never go into a church where the gospel is preached? The reason why we try to be oblivious to these truths is because if we meet the risen Lord, things will have to change. We would have to give up sins that we love and we would have to realize that we are not the boss of our life. Jesus Christ is the boss of our life and we need to bow to our knees before him and obey him as our Lord. Those who do not believe in the Bible always say that if God was real, why doesn't he show himself? If he showed himself, then they say that they would believe in him. The truth is that even if Jesus Christ appeared before all of us and declared with a booming voice from the sky that he is real and we should obey him, we would still not believe in him. Jesus Christ himself said that even if people saw him nailed to a cross, and even if he rose from the dead on the very third day, they still won't believe. This right here was a prophecy, a prediction that really came true. People saw with their own eyes the crucified Christ. They saw him days later when he had risen from the dead and they still said that they don't want to put their trust in this man called Jesus. The Bible isn't wrong when it says that a true believer walks by faith and not by sight. There was a man called Thomas. Thomas was one of the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, he wasn't there when the disciples first went to the tomb. When all the disciples were exiting and bustling with joy that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead, Thomas didn't believe them. He said, unless I put my finger in his hands, I won't believe. Thomas only believed when he touched Jesus Christ who had appeared in front of him. Jesus told him to touch his hands where the nail had gone and the side of his body where the spear had been driven. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the glorious one who flung stars into space, who created the universe is willing to be examined by fallen human beings like us. Just like Jesus wanted Thomas to believe, he also wants us to believe in him. He wants us to examine the evidence and believe in him, the Son of God. Jesus also said another thing that very same day. He said, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Although we were not there when Jesus was crucified or when he had risen on the third day, we should believe that all our sins were dealt with on that cross. All our sins were washed away by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we truly believe that Jesus Christ sacrificed his life on the cross so that we could have a second chance at life and that he has built a mansion high up in the sky for us, we will live with him for all eternity. We will have salvation. Our belief in him will save us from all our sins. Jesus pleads with us to believe in him and come to him like Jesus had told Thomas to believe in him. Thomas had followed Jesus for several years and had seen his teachings and the miracles he had done. Even still, he didn't believe that he had risen from the dead until he had seen him with his own eyes. What we can do is have faith in him and trust in him completely. God has laid down all of these archaeological proofs for us to see that we may believe in him and not be skeptical anymore. Jesus pleads with us gently to believe in him just as he has asked Thomas to believe in him.